right. Greg, can you talk, <clears throat> talk about what you guys are working on this time of year with still more than two weeks before a game? Yeah, um, you know, two weeks from Saturday. School started this week. Today was just our second practice since school started. And uh, we started transitioning towards looking at, into, at the Clemson. Uh, there's still some aspects of it. They're kind of half fall camp, half getting ready for Clemson. We haven't gone fully there with our attention, but we've definitely started spending time each day on them. And, you know, obviously they're extremely good. So um, the extra time's well needed. Um, there's still some guys that uh, are getting some good work, though, and good reps. And yesterday being the first day of school kind of typically is uh, – historically never a good practice and it was um, just very average I thought from just the energy and, and the output we got but today they bounced back really well and there was good urgency today. So can you talk about the quarterback situation and when you guys might make a decision? Yeah well when we're ready when we decide yeah <laughs> yeah. Still three or do you narrow it down to two? Uh, all three guys still taking reps. Okay, what do you think Fair to say with John in particular that you, I mean, you compared him experience wise to a true freshman. Yep. For him to be in a equal competition after basically 30 practices or so. Does that not speak pretty high to how his ceiling could be viewed because he's at a level playing field with two guys. One has been the system for three years, one's been the system for two years. That, you know, he speaks pretty strongly of John that he's on a level playing field with those guys. Well, all I've said is all three guys are still competing and repping. I didn't give a level of where everybody's at. And, uh, but that's a fair question. Um, <clears throat> you know, the thing I will say that uh, he's done a nice job, you know, keeping up at their pace. Um, and I just think the more time he gets for reps, uh, the better chance he has of continuing to improve. Um, and so just trying to get him as many reps as possible. Hold on one sec. Which? That was more or less a joke, because I know you're not going to say it. OK, that. good. <laughs> <laughs> where, does Woody, where does Woody Bear stand? Do you expect him to be red-shirted, or is it? You know, it's probably a little early for that. Um, you know, physically, he's, uh, I mean, he's almost 240 pounds. I've uh, been impressed with just his uh, uh, ability to focus and his eagerness to learn. He's, uh, he's getting better. He's way behind those three guys, in fairness, one, because of time, and two, because they're getting the bulk of the reps. Um, I don't know if he'll redshirt or not. Um, you know, some of that could depend on injuries and things that happen. So we're kind of bringing him along, still getting him as ready as he can be. Um, still believe he's got a bright future and feel really good about, uh, you know, bringing him in and that he's going to be a good fit. And so we'll just continue to bring him along, you know, kind of like we have some young guys in the past and just see how the season goes. So it's probably too early to say for sure if he would or wouldn't, um, you know, just because you never know what happens with the other guys getting hurt and stuff like that. Do you scrimmage Saturday, and is that a point where you'd like to make a decision on the quarterbacks and staff? You know, Coach, I don't think he's fully decided exactly what all we're going to do Saturday. I know we're going to do a lot of situational work. Um, we did some situational work last week. Um, I know we're going to do a lot more situational work this week. Um, so how much of that is scrimmage and not, I'm not sure uh, if Coach Foley has decided what he wants to do there yet. So um, just kind of take it one day at a time. I understand it's a competition rep, but is there any consideration that if Jeremy is not the starter to actually redshirt him because he graduates in December, you save him a year to potentially play at that point? Yeah, I hadn't really thought, gone there or thought about that yet. Um, so obviously that's an option, but we haven't we haven't really considered that at all. We're focusing on this year, trying to win this year. Right, how's Tyler Queen coming along? He's good. Uh, he's out there with us, full pads. Um, he's uh, on a kind of a pitch count, um, but he's throwing. I couldn't tell you. I've seen between 30 and 40 yards. Uh, I think anywhere from 30 to 50 balls. And so he's in a position where there's no reason to rush him. You know, he had an issue originally when he got here, kind of overcame that, then he got hurt again. And so just kind of with where we're at, I think it, would, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to push him back and re-injure it or have a setback. So, you know, Robbie's doing a good job with him and just told him, hey, go with the pace you need to go at. And when he's full speed, which should be sometime this fall, then we'll, you know, treat him as he's full speed. But until then, I don't, I don't want to over wear out his arm or anything. Are you shuffling the offensive line in and maybe taking a look at some other guys and not starting on that? You know, at this time of year, you're always doing some contingency plans. So, you know, if this guy goes down, what's the next move? If this guy goes down, what's the next move? And you got certain guys that got to know more than one position. So, you know, this is a good week to try to get some of those guys some reps at another position. Uh, we've got five practices this week, and then you got two weeks of game prep. So this is a good week to do that. So we've, we've mixed and matched some. Who are some guys getting reps at center? Uh, same guys that always do. Uh, Xavier, obviously. Caleb Kim. Austin Golson still is a guy that can play center for us uh, if we need to. So. How does Mike Horton's development come along? Just kind of 
making his way up the, the depth chart. Right? You know, he's doing some good things. Uh, we've tried to, Coach Hans tried to give him some series with uh, the first team at times just to see how he responds to that. Um, and that's kind of another part of those mixing guys in and, and whatnot because, you know, uh, the reality of it is you're fortunate when you go through a year like we did in 13 and nobody really has a significant injury. You've got to be ready for a guy to get hurt or, you know, get dinged up in a game and the guy's got to go in and we can't miss a beat. So he, he's doing well. And um, he's probably getting to a point where, like a lot of other guys, he needs game experience to really start taking that next step. So, is he a guard in your mind? Or yeah, he's playing a lot of guard this year. But he can. You know, he, he repped there as a backup tackle last year. So he's a pretty athletic kid and really smart kid. But we've kind of kept him as guard as much as we could this fall. In the contingency of the left tackle, would Mike move in or would you move Robert back to the left side and then either Braden the right tackle or Mike the right? Like, I know you don't want to play. Right. No, I know. Correct. Yeah, you know, uh, Robert's a guy who's who's played exclusively right tackle lately, but has a ton of reps on the left side, and he's a smart guy. He's a senior, so he's a guy who can know both. Uh, Braden's a guy that could easily play right tackle, and so you know, we'd probably take the older guys or the guys that have played more and ask them to play or move more so than a guy like Mike. You know. You anticipate the offensive line that came out of spring, the top five staying that five and Clemson. If things go the way they are, probably. You know. Was Tony Stevens able to practice today? Uh, not yet, but he's doing really well. He's out there, got his helmet on, and, and he's doing some limited stuff. So we, we fully expect him to be back, you know, in several days and, and should be fine. Uh, he's out there getting some limited work too. So uh, I think they're telling us uh, by Sunday or Monday we think he could be full go. And so, you know, I think he's, he's in as good a place as he's been in a long time. So that's good. Pretty early this season. I mean, Clemson. Or yeah, I mean, we'll have to see. All those guys are going to get an opportunity, and you know, those two weeks of game prep leading up, how people do, will we'll decide a lot. Um, you know, experience with freshmen in big games. Some guys they get out there and it doesn't matter. I mean, it's like they've done it their whole life. Other guys, even though they're going to be fine, it's just it's different. And so, you know, we hope those freshmen compete and contribute a lot in the first game. And um, We've certainly got no problem giving them opportunities. But uh, I think we've said we're going to need the veteran guys, the Marcus Davises, Tony Stevens, the Jason Smiths, uh, even even guys like Ryan Davis who played a little bit. Uh, those guys are going to have to carry some of the load, you know, hopefully the whole year, but definitely early on. Is there anything that's really stuck out to you with those freshman receivers that makes you go, I know maybe I've got two guys who can count on and play one? Yeah, I think just uh, the physical assets they have. I mean, all those guys um, – you know, whether they're going up against Carlton Davis, Javaris Davis, it doesn't matter. Uh, they go out and compete. There's not a lot of fear in them. And uh, they've all made plays. And, um, you know, there's still plenty of nuances and things they're learning to get better at. And, but uh, I think that this, physically they all seem ready. And, um, you know, mentally I think they'll catch up, but they've also shown enough capacity that I think they can help us this year. Is it fair and accurate to suggest you're happy with Austin at left tackle and where he's at right now, or is that the spot that could move by the third? Uh, I think it's fair to say he's doing a solid job. Um, you know, he's always got room for improvement like everybody else, and nobody's um, set in stone, but he's doing a good job for us. Been pretty steady. Anybody that's had a really good fall camp for you on offense has really stepped up their play? Yeah, you know, um, a couple guys, you know, Chandler Cox is just, um, he's a stud. You know, he's a leader um, by, by his actions. He's a leader. He brings energy. Um, he's playing a bunch of different spots for us. He can do a really good job. and. And that's who the kid is, and he, his attitude is contagious. Uh, I think Alex Kozan, being a veteran, has been extremely steady, and Braden's been steady, and uh, you know lo those guys really in that whole first five from Left and X and, and Austin. Those guys are older guys. That's what we need. Um, they've been steady. So, um, but but Chandler's kind of the guy that just pops out right away. How about Cam Martin? How's he coming along? He's doing good. He's doing really good. He's another guy kind of like the receivers. Hey, we're, we're playing on him. Hey, get ready to play. And, um, you know, how much that is early will be dictated kind of on what, where he's at and how he's ready and how everybody else is doing. But we fully expect him to contribute, doing a good job. And the freshman, receiver, the freshman receivers, how are they coming along? They're, they're doing well. You know, just like he said, I mean, all those guys, we're, we're pushing them to be ready. Who would be your, your second H or your third H at this point? I mean, if, if Chandler carries the ball, who's yeah. going well, we got other guys like uh, Landon Rice, Jalen Harris, play tight end for us, but they're athletic enough to play off the ball. Um, and so those guys are doing a nice job. Are they blockers? Or can they block pretty well out in space? They better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Chris, how much progress have you seen from Jason from, from when he first got here and then made the transition from quarterback to receiver? Um, you know, I think he's –
comfortable finally out there um, in terms of just, you know, the position from releases to catching the ball, just the nuances of playing the position. And, um, you know, I think there's still some in progress he can make in terms of being able to play longer periods of time just from the stamina aspect of running. There's a lot of running at wideout. You don't run that much at quarterback. So, um, but overall, you know, I think he's more comfortable there now. Coach, with the QB still in name, how is the team's chemistry? Do what? I'm sorry. You know, I think it's been good. Um, like I said, at the end of the day, uh, I like the chemistry of our offense, I like the chemistry of our team. It's just got a good feel to it. Um, how that translates into wins and losses, you never know, but you got a lot of close games in our league. Uh, every year that's the case. And if, when there's a tight-knit group of guys and the leadership comes from the players, you know, a lot of times that helps you in those tight games at the end. And um, at the end of the day, offensively, we got to be a good team offense. I said that last week. And uh, we've got to have the urgency because in two weeks, roughly, we play uh, you know one of the better teams in the whole country and, and one of the best defenses from last year. But um, those guys, I, I, I feel like they believe in each other and they're going to fight hard for each other. When the staff sits down and, and does discuss quarterbacks, do you guys have a better feeling now of where everybody stands and, and maybe feeling closer now than you did, say, a week ago on him or something? Yeah, I think we feel pretty good. and. You know, I know everybody gets all, you know, I don't want to say worked up. Everybody wants to know. And what's that? It's, we've only had two weeks of camp, and um, there's really no rush. And so those guys are continuing to work hard, and we're just trying to put them in as many competitive situations as we can and to get them as many reps and get them as good as they can be and, you know, also get all the information we can get. You and Coach both have said you want to tweak the offense when you do name a quarterback. Do you have time to do that now? I mean, is it, is it just oh, yeah. Right, right? And, and, yeah, and tweaking the offense isn't like changing an offense or putting in a new system. It's just uh, – and sometimes it takes you a couple games, if it, especially when it's a new guy, to learn – what they do best and, and try to build around their strengths. But we have a pretty good idea of what those guys are and what they can do. And again, it's going to be a team offense and um, those guys got to all be ready because you're one play away at any point in time or two plays away, depending on which guy you are. And so I, I, that won't be an issue. At 230 pounds, can Malik Miller help you at H if, if he's so far down the W? You know, he, he, he could um, potentially, but right now he's exclusively playing running back. And, you know, having three guys that can play the H spot um, right now is good, sufficient. But, you know, if we had some injuries or something, then we might have to get creative. So you're not really where, I, where you were with Bubba last year, <clears throat> where he just kind of made that transition? No, get... no, not right now. Uh -uh. Is, is, is Cameron playing just, just running back? Petway? Yeah, he's pretty much been exclusively uh, running back, but he obviously – you know, brings a lot to the table having played that other, you know, the H-back position last year. So there's obviously, with him and Chandler, there's a lot of flexibility with those guys. A couple more. Have you had to approach this quarterback battle any differently than competitions that you've been a part of in the past? Not really. Um, you know, uh, you just, you go out and you push them all to compete, put them in as many competitive situations as you can. And, um, you know, we chart everything, try to keep as much data on all the things we've done. And that, not that that's the reason, the only reason you make a decision, but, um, you know, at the end, these guys, the one thing they've done, regardless of how the outcome is, they're, they're close. They get along good. I've always been fortunate to have guys that get along in that room. And it's hard when you're in a competitive situation to, to get along with everybody and pull for everybody. But at the end of the day, when we make decisions, that's going to hold a lot of value with our team and how the team responds to the decision. So I've been proud of those guys for that. But. You know, everyone's a little different with just kind of how it unfolds, but overall we haven't handled it any differently. All right. Thanks,